Hi everyone, welcome back, and I hope you're doing well. Waveform 12 Free by Traction was recently released a few weeks back. We are in September 2022. This was really great news, long awaited, as the Pro version 12 has been out for some time. So if you haven't upgraded to version 12, I would highly recommend. There are so many new things added, as well as bug fixes. And because it's free, why wouldn't you upgrade? There's only small learning curve from the previous versions, especially if you are coming from traction. But other than that, the layout and everything else is the same, except you get so much more features. Some might argue that the layout and the workflow is a bit confusing, unlike traditional DAWs that we know, whether Studio One, Pro Tools, Cubase, and many others. But once you get used to it, it's really easy. You can quickly become creative and make music for free. I know there is another great DAW, Cakewalk by BandLab, which has a traditional layout, and it's free with no limitations, including plugins. But Traction has one extra advantage on top of Cakewalk. Cakewalk only runs on Windows, where Traction, Waveform 12, they not only run on Windows, they also run on Mac, they also run on Linux. So all in all, highly recommended to give it a try if you haven't already. I will leave a link in the description where you can download it. It's a free registration on their website. And once you register, you can download it. It'll be in your account. And then when you run Waveform, you go to the logging on. And once you log on, you'll get it for free. Because if you don't log on in Waveform, it will run as the pro demo version. But once you log in with your free online account that you created on traction.com, then it will turn into the free edition. But having said all that, I've got one sort of workflow issue that really annoys me that hasn't been fixed since Traction 5. Maybe because I never mentioned it to them. It may not be a problem to you guys, but it is a problem sometimes to me. And let me show you what I'm talking about. The issue I have with it is that there is no input and output metrics from the physical inputs of your audio interface to the tracks and the output from the tracks or your main bus to the physical output of your audio interface. Let me show you what I mean. So here I have a project. I've got track one to six, seven and eight, nine and 10, main left and right. If this doesn't sound familiar, it's actually connected to my audio interface which is the Tascam Model 12, which has uh, 10 inputs and then the main left and right. That's how I've got my tracks set up. And here, to record on track one, I'm just going to click into this area here. That brings up asking me what inputs I should use, which is fine. Unlike Studio One and many others, or like Cubase, have input-output metrics that you can create and you can assign a physical input and physical output to virtual inputs and outputs, and you can name them whatever you like. Here, you are connecting them directly. I guess it's similar in Cakewalk as well, where you select the actual physical input. Now I have track one, which I have a microphone connected, and you can see the level going up. And now I can arm for recording, and I can start recording. All good. Same with the output. If I select the track output, at the moment, it's going to default audio output. And then I have output 1 and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Or I can send them to other tracks. By default, is the audio output. And what is the default audio output? Well, we can go into the settings and into audio device. And here they are. So I've got my outputs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. 9 and 10 is disabled, which is fine. I can enable that. That's how it's enabled. And I've got input one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I can enable nine and 10 and 11 and 12 as well. And the default wave output is one and two. Now I prefer my output to go into the stereo channel of the Tascam Model 12. If you're not aware, the Tascam Model 12 is a mixer and audio interface in one, and it has up to 10 
channels. The last two, 7, 8, 9 and 10 are stereo faders. So I can select that one and make it my default. And now all of my tracks will go to the default output as the master bus. It is all good. Now, if I want to connect uh, my synthesizer on three and four, here, three and four are separate mono tracks. To make them a stereo pair, you basically go down here where the information is, treat as stereo channel pair. I click that and now it becomes one, two, three, four, five mono, six mono, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. Same, I can do that with one and two. Let's say I've got something connected on my channel one and two. I can make them stereo pair as well. You think that's fine. Now let me go back to my project. Remember, I just changed input one and two into a stereo pair. It has disappeared. And if I want to record, now they're stereo. Well, uh, that was fine. Now I want to change it back to, let's say, the um, mono and select that. And here, again, I can disable that. Oh, disappeared again. See my workflow annoyance? Now I can select one and two. And I can arm that and I can tap, 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 tap to the microphone. Yep, the signal is there. Okay, so that's one of the annoyances is that, you know, you need to com constantly change um, the inputs if you want them stereo or mono. Where in, let's say, Personas Studio One, you can have multiple virtual inputs connected to a physical input of your interface. So you can create a matrix input called Mono 1, Mono 2, Mono 3, Mono 4, and then create Stereo 1 and 2, Stereo 3 and 4, Stereo 5 and 6. And as you are trying to record, you can quickly come here and select the one that you want. And you can also call, name them like uh, mic input, guitar input, uh, synthesizer inputs. So this way, we are going back and forward, back and forward. Uh, if we are using the same audio interface, it doesn't have to be the uh, Tascam Model 12, any other multiple channel audio interface. And if you uh, are reconnecting um, instruments to them, you got to keep reconfiguring your matrix. I hope that makes sense. For me, this is really workflow annoyance and slowing down. The next thing, let's say, okay, I want to record the same information on track one and track two. Now, this is completely possible in virtually any other DAW. You can select the same physical input in, to go into two different tracks. Okay, so I'm going to select track number two, and I want to record input number one as well. And you can realize that track one, even though it was arm for recording, it just disappeared. So I'm going to arm for recording and I want track one and two to record the same microphone, the same signal. I can't. It just doesn't allow it. This may not be an issue to you, but as a workflow, as you are trying to do other things, it's uh, annoying. Some might say, okay, well, you can click on there and you can route the audio from a track, track one, and arm it. No, this won't work because selecting a track two input to come from track one, first you need to have an audio recorded on track one and it's being played back that it will feed to track two. So there's no live monitoring. I can click live monitoring, nothing there. And let's see here, I've got live monitoring already enabled. So it's still not there. Even you can see the signal is going up. Let me bring the microphone closer so we got better signal. You can see the signal going up, but um, there's there's just no signal on to track two. Let's start recording. Uh, can I have a recording on track one as well as track two using input one? No, this is not possible. Now you may ask yourself, well, why would you want to do that? There are many possibilities because I could have track one recording um, as row dry signal, where in track two, I could have an input plugins where I'm compressing and EQing it the way I like what I'm hearing. But if in the future I go, yeah, I liked it on that day, but I don't like it now, I still have my original row track recorded. That's the advantage of it. 
So there you go. I won't call this a rant, obviously. It's just um, annoyances that Waveform has when you are doing live recording. And most of the time here in my studio, I do live recording of, you know, uh, singer songwriters or small bands, two, three, four, five uh, piece bands. And it's really important that I have this flexibility. Otherwise, I would have no problem using Waveform because it's so light on my PC and um, especially for recording multi-track, it's really great. Or even if, if I'm out on the field and wanting to record multi-channel, I can take my laptop and Waveform will run and record, you know, 16 to uh, about 20 tracks all at the same time with no problems, no problems. And it will run for like two, three hours nonstop. But that's if I'm just uh, assigning each physical input to a track. If you know a way, a workaround to this uh, sort of uh, annoying workflow or being able to record the same input on multiple tracks, please do let me know in the comment section below and I will give it a try. As I said at the beginning of the video, Waveform, especially 12 free, is a fantastic DAW. It may look sort of old, but who cares? Because the end listener is only going to be hearing what you've re recorded, achieved. If it looks a little bit uh, daunting to the eye, yeah, sure, I can understand. It looks very old and outdated. But um, once you understand and the capabilities of Waveform, even the free edition, you won't look back. I hope one day, you know, Traction will enable some sort of skinning feature uh, like Reaper does, the Reaper DAW, where you can reskin it however you want it so that it visually looks uh, better for you, for your eyes, and you can see and visualize where everything is, especially the mixing console and the tracks. And um, maybe that's something that uh, Traction can look at because you are looking at the screen for quite a number of hours and I hope you are taking some breaks in between and visual aesthetics does come into play. Well, I hope this video was informative and now you understand something that you may or may not have already known about. Please like and share and consider subscribing to my channel and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.